Have you ever wanted to play an old Windows 95 or Windows 98 game on a CD like this one and you just couldn't get it to work in your Windows 10 or Windows 11 modern PC? Sometimes they work just fine, but other times they don't. Sometimes you can get it to work in Windows 3.1 with DOSBox. Other times it's a weird mix of 16-bit and 32-bit. It just does not work in Windows 11 or Windows 10. Well, I'm gonna show you in this video how I get these things to work using PCM, an emulator, and a copy of Windows 95. So if you're interested in that, stick around, put your seatbelts on, and get ready for uh, some fun. Now, the first thing you need to do this is a CD drive, obviously, and most modern PCs, many laptops especially, don't come with them. So this is a CD drive I bought at Amazon way back when. I don't think this one's still available. Actually, there's a DVD drive. It connects via a USB cable here in the back, and it plugs into a regular USB-A port. Now, I'm going to show you some devices here on Amazon, which you can buy today. It may not be the same tomorrow. Just search on Amazon for a USB CD drive. You should be able to find one that plugs into either a USB-A port or a USB-C port, depending on the type of computer you have. So the first thing you're going to do is connect the CD or DVD drive that you bought to your computer through USB. Here I have it right here. It's very simple. It shouldn't require any drivers or anything. It's just plug and play and work. You press the button to eject it, obviously. You put the CD in. None of this stuff is, this should be rocket science. I'm using this game over here. Put it in, close the CD tray, and then basically it's connected to the computer at that point. So that's the easy part. Now, what I recommend doing, first of all, is imaging the CD so you don't have to have this thing connected anymore. It's theoretically an optional step, but actually really it's required because these um, emulators, these emulations require a lot of processing power. It's basically emulating an entire piece of hardware. And so it, if it doesn't have to deal with the CD drive also, that's best. So it's better to use an image. So I use this program Image Burn. I think it's really cool. You can download it from here. I'll put the link in the description. You can see the window. But I already have it installed. And if you run it here, you get this pop-up window that basically it'll detect your drive. If it doesn't, you can pick which one it is. But it says essentially create image file from disk. And then if you have multiple drives, you pick the one you want. Here it found the drive that I have. It has a label over here, and then you could just go ahead and press this button, and it'll go ahead and create this ISO file. It might be a .iso, it might be a .bin and a .q, depending on the type of the of the CD. But either way, it's really simple. You can put it wherever you want. Here says destination. Just make sure you put it in a place where you know where it is. I already did this, and I put it in my in my C drive. But I'll just show you, like when you click on this, what it starts doing. And uh, basically, it's just creating an image of the CD and, and reading it, and, and that'll take a little bit. So I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to stop it here because I've already done it before. You just cancel it. And uh, let's assume for now I have the, the image already created. Now, the next thing you want is you want the actual emulator. So the emulator, the emulator I'm using here, again, is called PCM. I'm going to put a link here in the description. Current version is PCM version 1.7 for Windows. When you click on this, you get a file, and uh, you can just open it up, and uh, you basically have a whole listing here. I'm using. I actually registered WinRAR a long time ago, but it doesn't recognize it for some reason. Create a new directory that you want this to go into, and you can just basically drag it into that directory. I created this new one, PCM 1.7. You can just take everything here and drag it into the directory. And now you have PCM installed. Now, the other thing you do need, though, is ROMs. It has a directory here that says ROMs on it, but it's it, it's basically everything is empty. And if you click on the text file, it says this directory needs to contain some ROM files. So that doesn't really help you. Um, you got to actually download the ROMs. Um, you can, if you, I'm not going to put a link in the description for this because they are... Technically, I'm not sure if you're allowed to or not. You have to own the machine. So, you know, I, of course, own every single machine there is. But if you don't, you can look on the Internet Archive and search for PCM ROMs and you'll probably find something. Uh, but for now, I'm going to assume that uh, we have that. It's just basically a file that you have to extract into this directory. And I'll pause this for a second while I, while I go do that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the, the PCM program back in the main PCM directory. Run the program here. And here I have PCM Configuration Manager. Now this is blank, so I have to create a new configuration. And then I'm pressing the button down here. Put whatever name I want. Let's call it Windows 95. I'm going to do Windows 95 for the purpose of this video, but you could do Windows 98 you know, pretty much the same way. 
It's best because it uses a lot of power of the machine not to emulate anything more than you need. So for the game I'm trying to run now, it's Windows 95, and it's you know it'll take a 486. I do a Pentium, but you got to be careful. So you can pick which type of machine. The one that's worked well for me is to pick this Socket 7 Shuttle Hot 557, I'm pretty sure. Over the CPU, I could put Pentium whatever, and I'll put Pentium 90. And then memory, I'm going to scale down to 32 megabytes because I don't need more than that, really. I don't know why I just did that, but here we go. So that's the base configuration of the machine here. Um, I want this to be um, make an S3 Verge DX for the graphics card, so a fairly advanced. You can click Voodoo Graphics if you want. This game doesn't need Voodoo Graphics. I'm not going to do that, but if you, want, if you have a game that needs Voodoo, you can try that. And then for the sound device, I'll pick Sound Blaster EW32. And uh, for a hard drive here, I'm going to basically create a new hard drive. And I'll put a file here, and I'll just put it in this directory. I don't know if I can find it. I'll just put it for now in the same directory as I had before. PCM17, and I'll call it uh, Windows 95 H, Windows 95 HD. And then you have to select the type of drive. So let's leave the sectors and the heads the same. And for cylinders, let's put a, let's put this big number 16383. That gives it like an eight gigabyte hard drive. That should be a good. And then it'll go ahead and create the drive. So it's creating like an 8 gigabyte file on your computer. So let's wait until that does that there. It's pretty quick. All right, it says drive created. Remember to partition and format the new drive. Because by default, there's no partition, no nothing on the drive. It's just creating, a, you know, sort of a blank image. All right, so that's done. This, this should, could say the same. I don't need anything there. And I hit OK. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this thing that we created. If you've used uh, old computers back in the day, this may look familiar to you. What I'm going to do is hit this video thing and go to, uh, where is it? Scale filtering, no. Output scale 2x. So it makes the screen quite a bit bigger. And I sort of like it like that. So basically, it tried to start up this computer, but it says at the end, disk boot failure, because there's a hard drive, but it doesn't, they can't recognize the hard drive. So what you need now is you're going to need two things to install Windows 95. You're going to need a boot disk, and you're going to need a CD. Now, both of those you can find at this really cool site, WinWorld, and I'll put the links in the description. You should bring your own your own if you have, but this, this site is basically here in case, you know, you can't find your disk, but you're, you should own a copy of Windows 95 in theory to do this. So... You can, but you can download it here. I have copies of Windows 95. I have a whole bunch of them, but I haven't used this site as well because I can always like find the disk when I want it. You know, it's in a big CD folder with a bunch of CDs, whatever. So, bottom line is, you want to get the boot disk out of here. Um, here's this uh, this boot disk that I pulled out for. I picked 95 OSR 2X. OSR stands for OEM Service Release. So this is basically one of the latest versions, if not the latest version of Windows 95 that came out. So to download the uh, the disk here, and I'm going to download the uh, go to this other this other page on the same site and download the actual CD. Again, I picked Windows 95 OSR 2.5, and I'll put the links below. And you can just scroll down here and pick the download, and you want the not not the one that's French or German or Italian. You want the English one. Just click on this, and then you can go ahead and download that as well. So what you next want to do is go into PCM, and where it says here disk, you want to, it says change drive A, and you want to put in the, the file that you download and go find where it is. I have a copy of a file over here, so uh, if I can find it where I put it, here it is disk1.image, and then you want to go to CD-ROM, and you want to load image, and you want to put that with the, the copy of the CD image that you downloaded. So I think it's this one here, Windows 95 OSR2. And now I'm going to go ahead and reboot this machine now that I have a, a floppy disk in here. So I'll just do control delete hard reset, doesn't matter. 
Now it's going to reboot, but now it has a floppy in the drive, and it's going to boot off the floppy. So here it goes. I have these choices of CD drives. For now, I'm going to take no CD-ROM support because I want to just get the hard drive to work first. And it should boot into DOS or into the Windows 95 version of DOS, which is DOS 7. And I have an APROMT here for the floppy drive. I can do DIR and I get a contents of this boot drive. If I type C colon, it says invalid drive specification because it, the, C, this, the, the hard disk is there, but it can't actually see it. So I have to run this program called FDisk, which stands for fixed disk, which is a hard disk, the same thing. And it says, first of all, your computer is disk larger than 512 megabytes. I made it 8 gigs, so say yes to enable large disk support. And then uh, we want, I always, just to be safe, I always just make sure what I'm doing here, I always do four display partition information. Just make sure I don't delete something by accident. And it says no partitions defined. All right, so press escape to continue. And I want to create DOS partition or logical DOS drive, so that's number one. I want to create a primary DOS partition, that's number one again. It's checking the drive. The, the file for that's the drive, the virtual drive. Do you want to use the maximum available size to make the partition active? Yes. Now it's checking it again. Okay, now it, it did that. It created a partition. It says you must restart your system for your changes to be effective. Any drives you create or change must be formatted after you restart. So I can press escape, but basically I have to reboot it. So what I want to do is go to the menu. You can press control N as it says at the top to release the mouse system and send the control delete. And now to reboot it again. All right, so this time I'm going to actually load the CD-ROM driver. I don't think it matters which one you pick, but I'm going to pick number one, any CIDE CD-ROM driver. Just hit enter. It's loading the CD-ROM driver. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to have the hard disk because the partition's been created. It should come up as drive letter C. And I'm going to have a CD-ROM drive, which should come up as drive letter D. But the hard drive has not been formatted yet, so it's not going to actually work. So if I try to hit C colon, I get a C prompt. But if I type DIR, it's an invalid media type. So if I hit fail a couple times, it'll say fail and interrupt 24. So what i got to do is go back to the A drive and A colon enter. This time I'm going to type format C colon slash S. Slash S means the system and the system that file are make it bootable. Hit enter. And it's basically going to say, are you sure you want to do this? You're going to erase all the files. So that should come up in a second. Hit yes or hit Y rather to proceed with format and enter. And then it's going to start formatting the drive. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to you know, pause it and fast forward, basically. But feel free to go make yourself a cup of coffee or whatever you like you know, to, to make the time pass quickly. But it is formatting your virtual drive, and it should be over relatively quickly. All right, so now it says complete, system transferred. It says ask you for a volume label, just hit enter, it doesn't matter. And now you have your formatted C drive, it's C called enter, DIR for directory, and you see it's command.com, but that's it. So the next thing we want to do is, if I hit D colon enter, I get to the CD drive, and you see there's Windows 95 and setup. Now ideally I want to copy all of this over to the, the hard drive I've created just to make the setup easier. So if I go ahead here and hit MD W95 setup, create a new directory for called W95 setup, go back to the D drive, I'm going to go into CD Windows Win95. I should be able to copy this to the hard drive. I mean, it's pretty much a whole bunch of files. I mean, if I had a better copy program, I would just copy the whole thing, but I don't have it on this boot drive. So I'm just going to do copy star dot star to C W95 setup. And that should go ahead and copy all the main files. All right, finally copy everything. Now I hit C colon to go back to the C drive. 
I'm in W95 setup already. If I wasn't, I could just hit, you know, CD W95 setup. And now I'm going to run the setup program from here. So it's time to perform a routine check on your system. You need to press enter. Now it's going to scan the hard drive. You have no choice of this, unfortunately. You have to sort of sit through this. If you try to abort it, if you exit, it will just exit setup. So just wait through this. But again, I'm going to fast forward this. and it'll sh It's not that long, but I'll fast forward it anyway. Okay, so that's complete. That's because copying files needed for Windows setup. So that was really fast because they're already on the hard drive. Okay, so what we'll do is I find setup. Let's hit continue. Let's bring this window a little bit higher up on the screen just so you can see it better. Setup is now preparing the Windows 95 setup process, which will guide you through the rest of the setup process, or the setup wizard, rather. Please wait. So this takes, it's pretty quick, because again, it's on a hard drive now. Otherwise, it would take probably a lot more time. All right, so yes to accept the license agreement. All right, so next again. Choose directory, see Windows is fine, so we'll hit next. It's checking for installed components. Again, this is all going to be a lot faster because the files are on the hard drive already. You can pick whatever you want here. If you're an advanced user, feel free to go custom. I'm just going to use typical for this case. Now, you have to put in your CD key for Windows 95. So, like, in theory, you're installing this. You have a copy of Windows 95 already, which, of course, I do. Um, and you have a certificate of authenticity that came with it. Now, if you can't find your Windows 95 CD and you say so you search on the Internet for Windows 95 CD key, I am sure you will find something. So I'm going to pause the video while I put in my CD key and then I'm going to pick it up right after that. All right, so this is the very next screen you see, user information. You have to type in a name, I believe, so I'll type in Stu. You don't have to put in a company, so I'll just hit next. Now, you want to check your sound, MIDI, or video capture card, so we'll try to find the Sound Blaster 32 that we said is installed here. I'll hit next again. And now it's going to check the hardware of the computer, so this may take a few minutes, as it says. Um, hopefully this does not crash. If it does, like it says, you can press Control Delete, but it shouldn't. If it works for me, it should work for you because we're using the same exact everything. So uh, just let this go, and I will uh, fast forward this a little bit. All right. So Windows components, you can pick again. You can let choose components. I'm just going to install the most common components. Hopefully, that'll be easiest for everybody. It should work fine. No, I do not want a startup disk. We already have one. So click No there. Hit Next. And then hit next again to copy Windows 95 files. Again, hopefully this should be quick because they're all on the hard drive already. It should be very quick. I just want to remind folks, you know, while this is going, like, this is obviously a very long process, but you should only have to do it one time. Once you have this running one time, it's not like every time you want to play a game, you have to install this again. It should be just one and done. So... This is definitely going faster because it's off a hard drive right now, or at least it thinks it's off a hard drive rather than off a CD. Hopefully this will continue, but I'm going to fast forward this again so we don't have to wait for it to go. Alright, so I finally finished that, and now it's about to restart your computer, so you're going to finish. It will give you a warning that you should remove the disk from the drive, so hit Control end and then go to Disk at the top here and press Eject Drive A. I go back into Windows here, and now there's no more floppy drive, and now we can, or floppy disk, hit OK to restart. And now hopefully it should boot into Windows 95. We'll see if it works. So it should boot off the hard drive now. It was able to boot off the hard drive as soon as we formatted it, because we formatted it as bootable, but it did not have Windows 95 on it, so it would just give you a C prompt if it booted off the hard drive. So getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Okay, we'll fast forward a little bit here. Actually, I didn't even need to. Set up your hardware. So hopefully, again, this does not crash, but it should not. <laughs> 
It's always fun to set something up for the first time. It might work, it might not work. Again, I'll fast forward a little bit. Looks a little bit like it froze or something, but hopefully that's not the case. There we go. Okay, set up control panel. It's going to ask you for your time zone in a second. But basically, it's almost done. We're in the home stretch here. Hopefully, the audio works. I should put my headphones in because I, I won't know if it works otherwise. And I'll pick time zone for me. It's Eastern time. So pick Eastern time and apply. Okay. I don't have a printer, so we can cancel on this. All right, seven finished configuring your system. You must restart your computer. Hit OK. And it's going to restart yet again. And hopefully this time it'll boot into Windows 95. And we'll actually have a working operating system on here. That's what we're all hoping. There's a familiar screen here if you use Windows 95 in the past. Voila, we have audio. All right. This is more information. <laughs> oh, this is Internet Explorer 4.0 nonsense. All right, fine. United States. I mean, I'll just fast forward it. Alright, now it's finally finished installing a bunch of crap that we don't need. <laughs> Including all this garbage. If you want, you could right click here. See, take right click, select active desktop. Unclick this view as web page. All that nonsense will go away. And, I don't know, unless I lost my desktop icons also for some reason, but that's okay. Basically, oh, there they came back. All right, so basically, this is the actual Windows 95. After all that's done, and uh, if I run Explorer, I can get a C drive here. You can see this W95 setup. You can go ahead and delete it if you want. Um, you don't need it there, but it just takes up a bunch of space. You might need it if you want to maintain Windows later in the future. Otherwise, you could just delete it. If I right click on C and hit Properties, It'll show I have 78.85 gigabytes, and there's only 287 megabytes used. I got plenty of free space, which is really nice. And now I can go ahead, I'll hit control end, and finally I can take out the CD-ROM and load a different CD-ROM in there instead of the Windows 95 one. Load image, and this time I'll put in the one I created before with of the actual game. And uh, it goes ahead and changes from Windows to, to this game 9, the one I have here right over here. I'll hold it in my hand. And then I can go ahead and run the setup program, and it should all run as if it's in Windows 95, which it is. So I'm not going to not going to go into more detail here, but you get the idea. And basically, you can run whatever you know games you want in here. Obviously, you don't want to do this again every time, so you know you don't have to. Um, I'll show you how that works in a second. But you know, if you if you play a game and you want to you know get rid of it, you can you have to uninstall it. Otherwise, your drive will start filling up with garbage or whatever. But here it's installing the game, and it's going to work just fine. And I do a video on this game, so if you want to actually see what this game looks like, you can check out my other video. All right, so the game has been installed, and if I, if I, I can run the game, I just, you know, now I have actually a, an icon, my item in my program font menu. It just run the thing here. If I want to shut down the computer, it's going to shut down. You can press shut down and OK. You'll get this familiar as uh, safe to turn off your computer, and then you can just hit Control N, and you can X out the window, stop emulation, OK, and you're back at PCM. And when you want to run this thing again, you just press this button, and it'll just go ahead and run it, like and, you know, just start it up again. So that's how you use PCM to play Windows 95, or Windows 98 CD games, or any type of Windows 95, Windows 98 games for that matter. Inside a Windows 11 machine, which I'm running right here right now, the PCM emulator, I have Windows 95 running inside it, and it all runs really nicely. So let me know if you have any comments on this video. If you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the comment section. 
Give me a like if you like this. And uh, we'll do another one of these how-to videos really soon. So have a really great day, everybody.